I'm Diana McCollum. I'm Ian McIntyre. This is episode 22 of Fan vs. Fan for The Flash. Hey Diana, could I have a drink please? Ice cold. There is a bit of a chill in here. Could we please watch Ang Lee's The Ice Storm? He's Captain Cold, guys. <laughs> he was in this. This is as good as he was at that. You want anything? Beer, food? Pickled eggs here are fantastic. No, I'm good. I need your help with the problem. Must be pretty desperate to come asking for my assistance, but I'll bite. What do you need? Help transporting some people out of the city. How many? Five. Five very bad, very angry people who have powers. Powers, hmm? So you want me to what, freeze the problem? Protect you from them if anything goes wrong? First rule of business, always protect yourself. I'm not gonna help usher your enemies out of town. Hey, they're not just my enemies, they're your enemies too. I doubt it. All right, Ian, what were your pros? Oh my God, this episode, this show just gets it. Oh, like, God. it's so ambitious, and it's crazy to think that we're only at the end of the first season, and they're already doing episodes with this many villains, with three heroes showing up. Well, I guess one who's already We on got the show. like a whole rogues gallery and a mini Justice League in the not season finale. I know. I just love how most other shows that do this kind of stuff would hedge their bets. They would tease stuff out really long. But this show is just barreling through plot and they want to get to the fun stuff all the time. They, they're not worried about running out of fun stuff to do on this show. And I really just love how many chances they'll take. Yeah, like I think back to Smallville. He got like the costume 10 seasons in? Uh, five minutes before the series finale? Yeah, yes. that's what I mean. Like, you know, this we have gone really far in superhero TV since then. We, yeah. we get there quick now. No more teases, no more long hauls. How about you, Diana? What were your pros for this issue? My pros were Captain Cold, Captain Cold, Captain Cold, oh, and buddy. a little bit more Captain Cold. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. So good. Like, I think I say this every Captain Cold episode, <laughs> so I'm like repeating myself, but I don't care. Like, he's written so well, but oh my god, Wentworth Miller kills it. But even also, like, just the background stuff they do for him, they played Cold as Ice on a jukebox in the scene he was in, but he's the one who played it. But I don't know how Wentworth Miller keeps a straight face during any of his scenes, but I also feel like he probably never breaks. That guy's got to crack up between takes, but he is basically playing Captain Cold like a 60s Batman villain. But he's not quite. It's this weird in-between that I love. No other actor or character has quite gotten this mix, I think, and he's perfect every time. It's so arch, but it's so dry, mm -hmm. and they do find moments to make him like genuinely threatening and menacing, so you, you don't forget that he's a bad guy. Yeah, he's... He's a little over the top, but he's also really quite evil, but not so evil that Barry won't team up with him oh, Barry. <laughs> to transport other villains who aren't nearly as evil. Oh, I God. think Snart's way eviler than the people in that truck for the most part. I don't know. The guys in the truck tried to do a lot of murder this week. I know, well, they were... Yeah, the, okay, this might be a con, I don't know, but like, yeah, I think we really proved that the prison makes you more evil. <laughs> because those people were not nearly that evil when they went into the prison. Peekaboo was just like robbing trucks of money when she got caught. Her first thing she does when she gets out is try to murder Caitlyn with a gun. Yeah, I think we've proved that Super Guantanamo was a failed experiment in rehabilitative justice. <laughs> All right, Diana, what were your cons for this episode? My cons were that a couple people had to act really out of character for plot convenience. Okay. Like, I honestly didn't see why Barry needed Captain Cold's help. Not even just, like, before things went wrong, but, like, you're transporting villains and, like, you're the Flash. Yes. And you could just drug those villains so that they're unconscious until you get them to Villain Island. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, there was no reason to involve Captain Cold. I mean, it was interesting, but... I felt like I needed a better reason. Like, he ex I guess maybe he expected Wells to attack, but Captain Cold can't do anything to Wells. <laughs> I guess, yeah. And it also did seem a little bit weird that Barry can call up his superpowered buddies to help with that end fight, but doesn't think to call them up to help smuggle these criminals out of. No, he did. Know, they just... did mention that he called them both times, but like, Snart's in Central City, and like, uh -oh. Oliver has to come from Starling, Firestorm's. 
Who knows? He can fly. He should have been there faster. I guess my other con of the episode is that it was so weird that they were so focused on saving those villains when the particle accelerator was about to blow up the whole episode. Like, if you Very stop the true. particle accelerator, the villains will be fine. It seemed like they were focused on entirely the wrong thing. Like, tear the walls down. Make it not work. Barry could have deconstructed and reconstructed that building in 36 hours. Like, Pretty there much. would have been no accelerator to go off. It just would have been tubes that did nothing just sitting there that they were afraid to touch. All right, Diana, time for Easter eggs. All right, the big one that everyone was super excited about was when they were in the Ferris Airfield bunker, someone mm. asked, why don't they use this? And the answer was, a test pilot went missing. Oh, who could that be? And I'll explain because these strikes. Um, it was, they're likely mentioned talking about Hal Jordan, who yeah. is Green Lantern. Um, he disappears. He's this guy right here disappears. Um, I don't know if he actually disappears from his cockpit usually. He's not really Amelia Earhart. Yeah. I don't find he's usually missing in his origin story of getting his Green Lantern powers. He has to go to Oa. Yeah, usually he crashes a plane, gets a ring, and gets to work. We are also not have any inclination that we're getting a Green Lantern yeah. anything. In Maybe the he'll be missing for a super long time while they find the budget to make a Green Lantern show on television. Um, another little Easter egg. It's kind of a callback to an Easter egg. We've seen the Flash ring before. Wells has used it. But this is the first time we saw a Flash suit shoot out of a Flash ah, ring. So great. I love that this show is so willing to embrace ridiculous Silver Age Flash stuff. Oh. And just just do it, not comment on it, not worry about it, just have fun with it. And it's fun that they gave it to Wells because like the ring is a very yeah. like modern or present day Flash thing where he's like he folds it up like two hundred times and shoves it in his like that's an air expands it or whatever. That's yeah, it's it's it something about like he made a chemical that can shrink fabric and then it hits the oxygen and it expands and it's like hey barry why are you not a multi-billionaire textile shipping magnate why have you not revolutionized the way we transport goods on this planet i like that they gave it to wells because he's from the future so it makes sense that he would have the flash ring and then when we defeat wells that can just be barry's then barry will have a flash ring oh, yeah i'm gonna call it that. i'm gonna call it right now barry's gonna take that as a souvenir and just shove his costume in there please <laughs> do that barry and not so much an Easter egg, but maybe just an explanation. There was one villain on the show you might not have recognized, Deathbolt, the yes. guy who had Cyclops eyes and was killed by Captain Cold. Um, he is actually was introduced on Arrow, mm -hmm. and Arrow fought him and captured him and then brought him to Barry's Flash prison. So if you don't watch Arrow, that's who that guy was. It doesn't really matter because he's super dead now. Yeah, shot right in the face. <laughs> he died real well. I love Captain Cold, you guys. Have I mentioned that? He's so cool. So great. Thanks for watching. This is episode 22 of Fan vs. Fan for the Flash. If you want to tweet along with us like we do every week, you can follow us on Twitter at The Dork Show. Mm -hmm. Or you can subscribe to these videos to get them in your inbox all the time, right here. Ba boom. And on Sundays, you can follow Fan vs. Fan for Game of Thrones. They tweet along every week, and we tweet along, and you can subscribe. Lots of fun things you can do. Very interactive. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be back next week for the season finale of The Flash. You so won't, good. You won't want to miss it. We are going to call it as being so good. Yes. We have not seen it. We're just assuming. <laughs> or are we from the future? No, we've not seen it. Oh, that was cool. We'll find out. See you next week. Kick to my...